And I said, five years. He said, well, mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. And I said, well, the problem is it's going to take me five years to grow it. <laughs> so, but if, um, I'll yeah. be here all week. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's actually funny. One of those <clears throat> things, once you start shaving, it starts coming in more. Uh, you, you wouldn't know about that, I hope. No, okay. no, no, I don't. And then uh, you went to St. Louis? I did, after I graduated from uh, a, a private university here on Long Island. I don't know if we're allowed to say names. Oh, of course. No, Adelphi. All right. Um, I went to St. Louis, lived uh, there a year and a half, worked at KMOX. Have we now reversed roles again? It's fine with what? me if we do. Um, <laughs> and uh, I worked with um, and for Bob Costas, and um, I uh, then came to back to New York to uh, work at WFAN, which at the time was the first all-sports radio station in the country, and this was back in 1987. And then um, while there, I started working at News 12, Long Island, and I was also doing things for Bob and for NBC. So I kind of had a number of different things I was doing, and then it just turned into one when I got a well, contract. I, I visited you in uh, St. Louis. I remember that. I yes. remember that. I was. Um, I was. I, I had a, a different girlfriend at yes. the time, and um, I remember she was blonde. Yeah, she was hot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm separated she now, so it's okay if I say that. <laughs> um, and uh, Fen did not belong to Mickey Mantle at one time. They used to do a show from Mickey Mantle's restaurant oh. when he was still alive. They. I don't know. I haven't been back you know here for a long enough time to know if they're still mm -hmm. doing it but they they broadcast a show from there um, during the week mm -hmm. so uh, this is very different from what you've been doing the last uh, 10 years San Antonio is different from the Hamptons wouldn't you say oh no I mean <laughs> I think they're identical you know they both have such big and nice beaches and uh, <laughs> Oh wait, no, San Antonio doesn't have a beach. Um, yeah, I mean, two places couldn't be more different. Um, although San Antonio is a great place to, you know, to raise a family and bring up kids and that kind of stuff. But, uh, um, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. Or well, when we went to see that show at Guildhall the other night, you said uh, you were, first of all, you were reluctant to go. And then you said, yeah, you were glad because you haven't done anything like that for, since you've been in Texas. Yeah, just a completely different mentality um, mm -hmm. and a different perspective and point of view. So I think it's healthy to, you know, to do things like that. Yeah, you always like that. Sure. So um, are you looking for uh, any new uh, things to do here in New York? Do you see, would you like to move back? I don't know, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> um, of course, we would all love to have you here. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking of uh, maybe sending out some headshots or something like that. Um, but, you know, I certainly want to get them to look as good as they did the first time I did that. Well, and that was how many years ago? That was um, 1990. So I, I, mm -hmm. it was right after I'd, I'd done a, a series on bodybuilding with News 12. Um, and oh, I, was I have the, that tape. I still have that tape. Of yeah, it. that's, a, that's a good one to show. I just, I'm so embarrassed by it because I, I had to take my shirt off. And um, I, for a three-month period, I worked with a former Mr. America and like for, you know, three to six hours a day and was on this no-fat diet and you know, see if it actually worked. You know, this was before in the pre-steroid era, if there was such a thing. And so just, mm -hmm. just based on diet and hard work and then after that, I decided to go from one incredibly challenging competitive field, sports casting, into another, acting, and um, I don't know, had some very mild success. But uh, then I got married, and that yeah, all Yeah, that's changed. a whole job itself. Indeed. It is. It's very different. Well, I, I interviewed uh, some people who started uh, in this business, acting business, late in life. I mean, you could just change any time, whatever you want to do. Well, you thanks to you, I have, um, I still look very young, and... Uh, it's inherited. <laughs> so, that, I got that going for me. But, um, I don't know, I mean, just kind of a thought. Well, you have uh, many talents. You are, you, you are very, uh, you talk well, you are good with people, 
and uh, you're extremely smart. Huh? I mean, <laughs> no, you really are. I notice that any time any sort of conversation goes on, you, you're always knowledgeable. You just about See, know. See, now everything. most people wouldn't find that to be charming, but <laughs> anyway. And, uh, and you're funny. You make jokes all the time. You find humor in a lot of things, which is good. So you could do almost anything you want. Okay, you can be my agent. Oh, I'd love to. All right. No 10% or whatever it is Nothing they get. Nothing for free. Okay. So maybe we'd make a good team. Sure. We can call it Sleed and Sleed. Yes. I'll be Sleed and you be Sleed. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So how does it feel to be, are you going to go any place? You're going to stay here in uh, Hamptons all the time? Are you going to, planning on going to the city? To yeah, I'll or, go to the visit city. Visit your old friends? Visit some of my old friends and I'm here for a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, don't have much of a, uh, a schedule Ag other agenda. than, that's mm -hmm. the word. You just said I was smart and I couldn't think of agenda. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> um, and then head back and, you know, figure things out from there. But I think that uh, one thing that I'm really looking forward to doing is going to New York City and having, get buying a hot dog <laughs> and a slice of pizza and a uh, pretzel because Anywhere else you go in the world, it's never going to be as good as there, no matter how they there try There was it. quite a lot of changes. I don't know if, you, if you're going to go on the subways. It's very different, like uh, Penn Station. It's Not there anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it is just so different. They, they really made a arcade, a big, I mean, it, it's just full of stores, and it's so much nicer than what it used to be. Hmm. You can get really lost there. I remember we were at a friend of yours house the other day and um, a train came by and it said Long Island Railroad and I'm thinking why are we seeing that here because I forgot that I was here in Long Island but um, I digress yeah I, I've heard um, I haven't been to the city in a long time and I'm anxious to go back there just to see you know what it looks like how it feels to be back in New York it's very different when you have lived in New York and you come back like visiting you know it just it has a completely different feel so I heard that they have free telephones in the city. Did you ever hear that? No. Yeah, I did hear. I don't know if anybody else that when I told my friend Tommy about it, he was all excited. <laughs> he will have to look for them. For the free telephones? Yes. Okay. It's amazing. Do they work or do they? Yeah. Oh, of okay. <laughs> They're not props. Okay. <laughs> so I've been. Uh, you know, very active here in uh, at Guildhall that I mentioned. I had two play readings. Two of my plays were read there. And uh, it's called The Naked Stage. I keep advertising it. They have that uh, during the winter. But anybody who wants, like if you had written a play and you said, well, I'd like to work with it. So then you would go over there and uh, have it read. And you have to, of course, get the people to read for you. So it's been very exciting. They had that for two years. And uh, I will continue doing that. What does it feel like when you have others reading the words that you wrote? Well, it's, it's interesting. And a lot of times they do things that I didn't even intend. It. Of course, there's a director there. And the Georgia Day, it's about Hungarians. And when they were, and I left a couple of Hungarian things in and not thinking too much about it. And, but they didn't even rehearse. And then <laughs> when they said, I was hysterical. I was, it was so funny, some of the things they did. And they said, I just was laughing so much. I saw uh, the videotape of that. Oh, you did? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it was extremely funny. Um, and uh, I'm surprised that you say it wasn't rehearsed because <laughs> like some of it just seemed like it was, you know, real good comedic timing and um, apparently unplanned for on some occasions, which... Well, some of those people are like semi-professional. They sure. are very good sure. at the reading the first time, but of course they have their own interpretation how to do it, which goes to show you that an author the words can be done, it could be five different plays. Right. It, the interpretation is different. If you had, are you getting a signal of some sort? 
Yeah, she's always giving me the finger. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do, can I ask you another question? Is there yeah, time? Yeah, yes, time. If you had a choice to have anything that you've done, uh, either published or um, performed, or would it be a song? Would it be a play? Would it be a book? What would, what would you like to have? What would be your first choice? Well, my, the book, the children's book, that would be. I would love and for what, the whole world to read it because it's a, it is a good moral. What is the name of the children's book? The Fight of the Crayons. Okay. And I just got an agent for it, so I don't know what they're going to do yet, but at least something. And now that's, I mean, you talk about stick to <laughs> you, you wrote that when I was a kid, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Well, when something is good, it's, it's timeless. Good. That's it's right. It's timeless. That's right. It's a timeless story. And of course, the two plays, they are. They are fun. It, it's not something that you're going to win an Oscar or a Tony, but it's just fun. So you could be an overnight sensation of yes. writing world? Yes. Before, I have like 20, 30 years to live, and <laughs> you never know. That's a good story by itself that uh, a senior citizen started. Wow, you're a senior citizen? Isn't that amazing? When did that happen? Yeah, I wonder myself. So uh, it, uh, they tell me that the show is almost at the end. And you see, it's time just flies it just flew when, you're, by. when you're having Where fun. Where did it go? I don't know. And the, the theme song here, it's something that our friend Tommy DeMeo had written. I had no and, idea. And uh, your sister Jody's husband, Robert, arranged the song to be Anna Cheek sings it. Did I miss something, by the way? No, it's, she's not married. Okay. She's just, uh, you know, I, I know, know I haven't been doing <laughs> well keeping up with the family stuff. But. No. no, and I'm not married either. So now, if we, do we have any time left for me to ask what happened? You're not married. You have three children. None of them are married. <laughs> no, no, no. I was married at the time. All right. Then. I was married. So it's been wonderful to have you. Well, thank you. And uh, I wish that you could come back again. You could fly back anytime. Thanks. And this is Judy Sleet signing off. And uh, let's, I always wave bye. And don't forget to tune in. Don't forget to tune in. Channel 20, uh, I'm on three times a week. See, now if they're not tuning in right now, how would they know to tune in? I know, but maybe they'll because it's on three times a week. You never know when people are going to uh, tune in. And uh, then I send the tapes all, uh, all over the place. And it's going any, to Any place in anywhere in particular? You just kind of send them out, see what happens? No, it's going to Riverhead. And I'm working on sending it to Manhattan. That's uh, Anna Cheek singing.